tango is you know tango didn't originate in argentina it originated here really um, yes oh, that's, interesting. that's a little known fact okay uh -oh. So, <laughs> oh no this is this is the home of of tango Okay, so we're heading down to Uruguay with my new friend, Ramona Di Viola. Ramona, how are you? I'm doing really great. It's the second day of spring, and finally the weather is starting to act like spring down here. One of the things someone told me when I first moved here was you don't move here for the weather, and it's true. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay, interesting. So we'll, <laughs> we'll get into that. Well, tell us, you know, I, I've heard nothing but great things about Uruguay. I've never been there, but I hear nothing but amazing things. How, you know, of all the places, tell us a little bit about your backstory, where you're from, and how you landed in Uruguay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm from the United States. I lived in California for most of my adult life since I was 19 years old. Uh, I, I moved here last year. I was 64. Um, I'll be 65. Wait, I was 63. I turned 64 here. I'll be 65 this year. And I just retired in January. So um, I came here because I wanted to get out of the United States. Um, I just felt like the political situation in the United States is sort of becoming untenable. And um, I'm also, as a person who's aging, I wanted to be someplace where I could have my medical and health care taken care of in a, in a much more affordable manner. Yes. So I started looking at Europe and I looked at Portugal. I looked at the pigs, right? Like I looked yep. at Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain. And what I found was uh, that they were too expensive, cost of living wise, too expensive, and that the immigration policies were pretty prohibitive. Okay. Um, so I, I was telling a friend of mine, I'd lived in Mexico before, and, and I've also lived in Panama. I didn't want to go back to those places. Mm -hmm. um, so I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, I need to bug out. I want to try to get out of the United States. And she said, oh, I have a friend who lives in Uruguay. And I was like, Uruguay? Huh. What? Let me look at this, this place, right? So she got me in touch with her friend, and I started speaking with him. And he and his husband, who's Mexican, we're getting ready to take a trip back to the United States and Mexico to take care of some business. And they offered me a, their apartment to house it for a month. So that wow. was in April of 2022. Okay. And uh, so I was able to come here for a month and really sort of scout it out. And it was sort of the tail end of spring, excuse me, tail end of, of fall. Mm -hmm. So we were going to be heading into autumn uh in april of last year because the seasons are switched and i felt really good about this place and the more mm. i researched it the immigration policies are very liberal it's like come on down this is a country of three and a half million people the majority of whom live in montevideo which is the capital city which is in the state of montevideo so yes. state and capital are same names yeah um i was able to start the immigration po po process and get my temporary residency card, which is called a cedula, which then allows me to buy into their public health care system. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell you this, Ray, that was a huge, huge thing for me because I was a very healthy, super fit athlete. I got down here and I got laid low. I got really, really sick. Hmm. And um, I don't know if it was COVID. I tested negative, but I got really sick and I was sick for a few months. Had that happened to me in the United States, I would have gone bankrupt. Sure. Yeah. Plain and simple, you, right? Ramona, you mentioned something called cedula. What is that? And how, how do you spell that? Cedula is spelled C-E-D-U-L-A. Oh, I got it, it right. It's your residency card. Okay. And in Uruguay, you need a cedula to do just about anything. Like if you want to open a bank account, sometimes even when you want to make purchases, yeah. if you want to get a phone, you have to have the cedula, right? Okay. So it is, it's very critical that this is one of the first things that if you're really planning on living here and putting down a route, you have to go through this temporary cedula, which then puts you in the process of becoming a permanent resident. Now okay. there are some stipulations that surround that as well. And there uh, you you have to be in the country. You can't just go border hop back and forth. Mm -hmm. If you do that, 
while your cedula is while your permanent residency is in process they put you to the back of the line so you have to um you have to get what's called an ingreso and a regreso which is you can leave the country but you have to ask permission uh -huh. if you don't if you don't do that then you get put back to the back of the line uh, i see okay so you got it okay so let let's let's back up a little bit and talk about so when you first started exploring you had to look at visas and you yes. had to obtain a visa what is that process about you um, don't have to get a visa here you don't um, okay you don't if you stay longer than three months you have to leave the country right and get your right so you have a three months period of time where you don't need to get a visa okay but i knew that i was going to stay here and so i started the cedula process right away okay so the cedula process, so what does a person have to do to begin that process? For any retiree thinking about um, Uruguay, what would they need to do? Um, the process is a little laborious and it's a little triangulated. So uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to, um, before you leave the United States, you have to obtain all your birth certificates and all those kind of legal documents. So if you're yep. married, you have to have your marriage certificate. If you're divorced, you have to have your divorce certificate, et cetera, right? When you get here, and they have to be apostilled, which do you know what that is? No. Okay, so the apostillation process is a government certified, um, it's like a notarized version of your birth certificate it can't it has to be, have an unbroken seal so the states will seal it okay before you come down here so then once you get here you have to bring all of that stuff to the national registry which then makes fingerprints you puts you through some you know background checks and they take that information and they send it back to the united states to verify that you're not a criminal yeah. So they get all this information, right? They send it back. The FBI sends it back and says, yeah, she's legit or no, sure. she's a fugitive, right? Right, right, So, yeah. um, So okay. you have to go through some of that legal process. You also have to have uh, a police. You have to register where you live, and you have to have two witnesses that will vouch for you. So my two friends that I stayed with that lent me their apartment, who became my friends, right? Once I came back down here, they were the people that vouched for me because they're permanent residents as well. Okay. So you got to have two pe you have to have two people in Uruguay vouch. That's right. Okay. Okay, from okay, once you get all that information back from the FBI and you're cleared and so forth, then you can go to immigration, <clears throat> pardon me, and start the actual process of applying for your um for your citizen for your residency. Okay. Now the cedula residence card is there a a, a a minimum requirement of uh financial obligation that you have to yes. show good question you have to show that you earn at least that you have an ongoing income of at least 1500 us dollars per month okay and that's a that's a great question so in order to do that you have to go to an accountant bring your bank statements bring your savings your stock holdings anything that's you know that's associated with your income or your you know monetary value and then the accountant will then write a letter and again it's a sealed you know he'll seal it and you take that and then the people at immigration will review your accounting yeah and say okay she you know she makes earns enough money or has enough money to be able to stay in the country um, are there other visas that are available to people considering living in Uruguay that would be less expensive? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, okay. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. Um, I think there's like the digital nomad visa yes. or whatever. I, I think, I you know what? I Honestly, I can't answer that with any kind of certainty. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, good. So it sounds like it's 1500 a month that you have to show. And once you do that and prove that, then how long does it take before you become a permanent resident? Okay, so I am still waiting 
for my appointment to go in for my permanent residency. And I'm okay. hoping it will happen within the next <laughs> few weeks, right? Yeah. Because I started the process in October of last year. And um, it's usually, they say, between nine and 15 months. My, my temporary cedula is good for two years. So okay. I still have time. I still have time in order to do this. But um, not to badmouth Uruguay because all bureaucracies are the yes. same, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's just, it's a bureaucratic miasma. And you yes. have to just be, they say down here, one of my favorite terms that they use here in Uruguay is tranqui, tranqui, which means chill out, right? Yeah, grati, <laughs> I like that. What is that, G-R-A-T-I? No, no, it's like tra be tranquil, tranqui. Tran oh, tran tranquilo, tranqui. yeah. Ah, tranqui. Okay, tranqui. I'm going to use that today on somebody. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. So then you went down there, you had to, to find a flat, obviously you had a contact, but what do people do searching for flats and where do you look and what are the prices going for? What can you get, you know, a one bedroom flat studio flat starting out in uh, Montevideo? So I bought my apartment. I have a little one bedroom house here, a one bedroom apartment. Wow. I paid $90,000 for it last year. Wow. Okay. I just sold it for a hundred thousand dollars in Montevideo. In Montevideo, and it's getting more and more expensive in Montevideo. Prices for like I own this place. I paid cash for it, so I'm not renting it. Yeah. However, there are additional costs, especially if you're living in an apartment building. They're called Gaston communes, and that is your communal fees that you pay. It's like a homeowners association, if you will, yeah. that covers the electric for the lighting outside it covers right. the cleaning service it club it covers the insurance it covers the administration right so um when you purchase or if you're renting you can rent a pretty nice apartment in a nice neighborhood for about eight a one bedroom or a, you know one bedroom for about 800 to a thousand dollars a month okay that's now that's the higher end. Those that's a, those are nice neighborhoods in Montevideo, maybe closer yeah. to the coast, okay. a little bit safer, et cetera. Not that Uruguay is unsafe. It's pretty darn safe here. Um, but you can find places for cheaper. Definitely. You can find yeah. places in the five hundred dollar range for one bedrooms. OK. Uh, but I just. So I, so I bought this place and I, you know, I made a little bit of money on it. Actually, you know, it, it, when all, all said and done, I probably broke even, right? Sure. Um, with all the fees and so forth from the people that I purchased, et cetera. But um, I am now moving to Periopolis, which is about a 90 minute drive east of here. Okay. And it's on the coast. It's a little coastal community. And I paid 90,000 for a house, two bedroom house, two bedroom, two bath. It's tiny. It's only like maybe 800 square feet. It's a 20 minute walk to the ocean. And it's got a huge yard, like a big piece of land. How many bedrooms? So, two. Two bedroom house. Two bedrooms, two bath. Okay. Okay, but you order what? is not under the radar anymore people are starting to discover this country right yeah, and one of yeah. the reasons that people are coming here is because it has a very stable economy has a very stable government has a very stable um uh currency it is a conservative country but very social liberally social policies right mm -hmm. so gay marriage has been here for 20 plus years marijuana is legal here um there's a the sense of live and let live. People can be who they are. So there's a really large gay community here, very supportive, large gay community. Um, and it's just a really, people are very chill. People are super nice here. Um, of course, you're going to get, you know, there's a spectrum. But for the most part, when I say it's a conservative country, it it's like kind of like Italy in that sense of like there are still some moral standards that people adhere to. Yes. But on the other side of that, people are much more willing to accept you for whoever you are, right? And they don't care yeah. if you're gay, straight, purple, green, you know, people. Right, don't care. right. 
Wow. That sounds like a, I, I never knew that about um, Uruguay. That sounds awesome. It's a, it's a cool little country, you know, it the sounds more like a, it here, sounds like, like so that means, you know, it's gotta be probably quite, uh, there's a, probably a lot of creative things to do there too. I would imagine, you know, uh, it is a country full of artists. Yes. Full of artists, full of art. Um, I love some of the things that I love about this place is all the museums are free except the private ones, right? There are some private museums. Yeah. But there are, the museums are free and this country really supports its creative community. So there's lots of festivals. There's lots of museum shows. There's lots of music. There's every, um, coming up soon, will in February will be the um, carnival, right? That goes on for a month. Uh, dancing, drumming, parties, you know, yeah. uh, parades. It's pride right now. And we we celebrate pride here in September, not June, right? Yes, so yes. it's pride month right now. So there's all kinds of really terrific activities going around for the gay community. Um, it's, there's beautiful little parks. Um, and we have this sidewalk that go, it's a, it's called La Rambla and it, follows the whole coast of Montevideo. It's like 15 miles long. You can walk end to end. That's like In a, old... it's called La Rama? La Rambla, R-A-M-B-L-A. R-A-M-B-L-A. Okay. And that's like a, like a boardwalk? It's not a, it's a big sidewalk, right? Big like sidewalk. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and it's there, it's during the summertime, it's packed up with people. Yeah. Um, in, in Uruguay, in Argentina, the national drink is called mate. Mate, yes, yes. Okay, so you see people walking along with their little mate cup in one hand right. and their thermos <laughs> tucked under the other arm, right? Yes. And it is, it's so lovely. You see people sitting on the Rambla. There's a really nice little bench that's, you know, like it's a concrete bench that people can sit. So every weekend, every seat along the Rambla is occupied with people drinking their mate and they share their mate, right? Which is, it's a little unhygienic for me because I'm a North American, right? But I, and especially with COVID and whatnot, I, I wouldn't want to share anybody sure. else's drink. Yeah. But they drink it through a little straw and it's just this lovely thing. Like it's just this lovely tradition. You see people getting on the bus in the morning and they've got their mate, they've got like a little holder that's got a thermos and it's, it's just lovely, right? Mm -hmm. It's the equivalent of, a, a person from the United States in their Starbucks, right? Like, we got one in one hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's funny. That is interesting. Well, let's, um, let's talk about, okay. So if you have, so you're saying on the low end in Montevideo, you can get a, you can get an apartment for 500. Yeah. Um, now do the apartments in and around um, these cities, do they include utilities or are they separate? No, um, they do not. They're separate and they're expensive. Okay. Electricity is really expensive here. Um, my electric bill during the winter time, and I just have a one bedroom and I just, this little room right here is where I live. And then I go to bed and I shut the door, right? My yeah. bedroom is back over there. Um, my bill has been around a hundred dollars a month. Okay. But I'm a conservative user, right? So that's electric you, for a hundred. That's electric. Yeah. Wow. If you averaged your utilities, like what do you budget per month for everything, including like if you say Wi-Fi, I even throw in cell phone, you got water, electric, just to give the viewers an idea for like a one bedroom, what would you budget? Let me pull up my spreadsheet real quick. Hold okay. On just a second. I told and, you I'm cool like that. <laughs> and I love your, I, I love the apartment. It looks gorgeous. Oh, thank you so much. It's like such a nice, warm, welcoming place. It's super cozy. It it's everything I needed, but what I don't have is I have two patios. Yeah. One of the reasons I bought this place is because it has all this lovely natural light, right? Yes. A lot of apartments in Montevideo might not have too many windows or any outdoor access. And I, mm -hmm. I know who I am, right? Like sure. I need to be able to go sit outside in the sun or have some natural light on me. Um, so the house that I bought is it's just amazing right but it has yeah. all this outdoor space and when i first got here i was staying in an airbnb and i was i knew i wanted to buy a place right 
And it's been an interesting experiment living in the city. I'm not a big city kitty. I used to be a farmer. I lived out in the country. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but we ran out of water in California and the fires and all that, right? Like it just took its toll on me. So, uh, but but now I, I realize I need peace and quiet and calm. And yes. it, this is a city. Like at first I was like, I wanted to, you know, I've been living in the country. I want to be able to walk out my door and go get a cappuccino. I want to be yes. able to go to a museum. I want, yes. you know, without having to get in a car. And this city is super walkable. I can walk from my house, which is in this neighborhood called La Blanqueada. Yeah. To the coast. It takes me about 45 minutes on foot. Are now so, are you ta now are you talking about Periopolis? Or no, are you I'm talking, talking about Montevideo? Yes, okay, so Montevideo. Yeah. Okay. I'm still in the city. Montevideo, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me I'm looking at my uh my to get back to your question cuz I'll go off track. Sorry. Okay. Um <laughs> my cell and my internet combined is about $75. Okay. US. My water is is also included in my gas house commune, which is the communal thing that we yep. that we pay. By next month, I should be paying seventy five dollars a month. My my health care, yes, costs me eighty dollars a month. Okay, and so you have a private insurance. I have. It's called a mutualista, and these are the public hospitals. Mutual are, mutualista. Mutualista. M U T U A. Uh huh. Lista. So yep. it cost me eighty dollars a month to be a member of this mutual lista. Okay. And my copay when I go is like ten dollars, right? Um, I have to pay for my prescription drugs, which are not expensive, right? Yes. So there's therein lies the value, right? Like sure. there's, there's a lot of like I was paying when I was on uh, you know Obamacare in California, covered California. I was paying $190 a month just for the privilege of being able to pick up a phone and call a doctor, right? Yes. And then it was going to cost me $150 deductible to go see the doctor. Yeah. And if something is wrong with me, then it's however many thousands of dollars for drugs and everything that came after that, right? Right. Um, so. So this is really, really reasonable down there. Totally. Yeah. Totally. The public transportation system is excellent. Okay. I haven't had to have a car. I I have a bus stop at the corner. Uh, a bus costs me a dollar a ride. Okay. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, how much How much the, do you budget per month in transportation to get? Around? I budget a that. I let's see. I budget twenty five to thirty dollars a month for my transportation costs. Okay. Wow. The other thing things are this is that's not a that's great are you going to need a car in your other town i think i might i think yeah. i might need okay. a car i have a bicycle i ride my bike around right but yeah. i i don't like right now okay so let me tell you another benefit to why you know this is not a cheap south american this is not like ecuador this isn't like you i'm know, getting it's, that yeah it's it's definitely more expensive but the amenities that you get and i love the fact I, I truly love the fact of how welcoming they are to differences. I mean, yeah. if you think about the division in our country, in the United States right now, it's absolutely abominable. And and to to think that I I know nothing about Uruguay, but to 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 how you described it to be such a incredibly welcoming country is so desirable for me as an option. Um, that's big, you know, so and that's worth a little bit more money than than, you know, going to a place that's a little bit more shut down to things that are a little bit different. You know what I mean? That I don't. So because I'm a creative, too, and my background's in, in theater. Um, so I really appreciate communities like that. Um, you would love it here. You would love it here. What you described already. I know I would. I mean, yeah. and I've never, so it's definitely a place I'm Come gonna, on down, Ray. <laughs> yeah, I got to eventually check it out because um, because it sounds great. And the healthcare, like you say, that's a big problem in the United States. It's a, yeah. it's a continuous problem. Um, and there are a lot of people that live in the U.S. that are going overseas all the time for just medical care. 
and it continues to grow. People are are going to Mexico. They're going places in Ecuador, Thailand, and Vietnam. Thailand, everywhere. Yeah. Portugal. I know people that have gone to Portugal to get dental work done. Um, so it's a it's a big big problem, and it continues to grow because people are learning about how I can save thousands and thousands of dollars to to go do this procedure overseas somewhere. So. Um. It, just to kind of touch upon some of the expenses too. So I, I got my spreadsheet up here. Okay. I spend I spend about on a weekly average, I spend about seventy-five dollars on food. Now Wow. I eat that's that's weekly? That's weekly. Okay. So with that being said, I don't eat a lot of meat. I I eat largely I'm a largely vegetable based diet, um, plant based diet. I'm not a vegetarian. I do eat meat occasionally, but I it's not a habit. <laughs> yes. But if you are a meat eater, you like to, you know, live a little larger, your food bill will be I don't I also don't drink. So it's like, you know, I I keep things pretty close to the bone on my diet. Sure. Um but you could, you know, you could budget more. You would budget more if your tastes were, you know, a little bit more expensive if you wanted to be buying cheeses and wine and beef and so forth. By yeah. the way, the beef here is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's all grass fed. There's no right. cattle lots where they finish off on grain. No, in the, the, it really tastes good. Like it's really delicious. Um, I'm sorry if I offend any vegetarian people, but um, I, you know, I, that's one of the reasons I don't eat a lot of it, but I know it sounds a little hypocritical because I will eat it occasionally. Yeah. Uh, so my my food costs are like about that, about seventy five. So let's say you know um, three hundred to three fifty a month is what I'm paying. Okay. Uh, every now and then again, I'll have to take an Uber or a taxi. I've spent maybe eight dollars this month on an Uber. Okay, so you stick to the transportation where it's about twenty five a month now. Yeah. Originally, earlier, were, earlier okay. I was spending a lot more. Like in May, now I was you're spending a lot more. now you're acclimated and you found totally. now you've learned that. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, all right, cool. I know how to take buses now, and the buses are really clean. They're very efficient. They get a little crowded. Um, people are very well behaved on the bus. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't like to go out at night a lot. Like there are places I won't go at night, right? Just because you know, I'm an older woman and whatever, right? I've just got the, my safety radars up a little bit higher these days, but I don't feel unsafe here. Yeah. You no, know, I don't feel unsafe. I, I, when I'm downtown or I'm on a bus or whatever, I'm not looking over my shoulder. Of course, I'm conscientious of like having my purse zipped up and right. Sure. But that's yeah. just common sense. You have to do that everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so you go out to eat sometimes. How's the, how's the food? Um, what is a typical like neighborhood restaurant charge for a meal? Okay. Um, this is my one downside to order. <laughs> I come from a foodie background, right? Like I, I don't know if I'm not going to drop names, but anyway, I come from a, you know, very food forward, food conscious, uh, history in my life. And I have to say the the food here is sort of hit hit the hasn't hit the mark. There are several restaurants that are really good, right? Like mm -hmm. they're the places that I like. If I'm gonna go treat myself to some food, I'll go to those restaurants because I know they're they're culinary restaurants, right? Yeah. They're not just your neighborhood restaurant. Now that being said, the neighborhood restaurants here all have <laughs> sort of a very similar menu. It's gonna be pizza what they call mozzo, which is like a flat bread with tomato sauce and a little bit of cheese on it. It's like a little pizza light. They have chicken and veal cutlets and um, raviolis and things like that. So it has a really sort of Italian-esque yeah. feel to the food, but it's almost like they sent their B team over from Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and it, I, well, you know, Aren't they said so the A team is over in uh, Argentina, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, if you want great food, go to Argentina. <laughs> um, um, but that being said, it is not cheap, right? Like it's expensive to go out to eat. A cup of coffee is going to cost you, a cappuccino is going to cost you $5. Wow. Right? Okay. Yeah. So, 
let's see, what have I eaten this month for my dining out? Because I do, I go out and have eat. Let me see, where am I at? Dining and entertainment. I'm at about $50 this month, which is more than usual because I took a friend of mine out for dinner. So you so, budget you budget about 50 bucks per month. Yeah, yeah. Your typical neighborhood eatery, you're going to spend probably between 20 and $30 per person. Wow. And that's, you know, a pizza with so maybe- would, Wow, that's yeah, expensive. It's, it's expensive, right? So, and that's the other reason that I don't eat out that often is just that it's, you know, it's not worth the value for me unless I'm with friends and we want to just have a night and have a sit and, you know, have a pizza and drink some beers and whatnot. Okay. So the only thing we haven't talked about, you did cover healthcare. We haven't covered um, really what you do for entertainment. And you did mention that there are museums that are free. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, do, what else do people do um, for entertainment around there? And, and, and typically um, I, I try to give the viewers a budget on entertainment as well so that they can get an idea of what they'd spend on entertainment per month. Okay, sure. I just went to an amazing ballet a few weeks ago. Ooh. Dos Hemisferios. And it was two different ballet. It was the same ballet com company, but two different directors of the piece. One was British and the other one was an Orowasho, which is what they, they call themselves. Yeah. Uh, Uruguayan men are Orowasho, Uruguayan women, Orowasha. Right? Wow. Okay. So um, they were, it was like West Side Story meets um, the Nutcracker, right? Or yeah. uh, Swan, <laughs> Swan Lake, right? Like it was these wow. two different, like, you know, you could really tell the difference, the influences of the British traditionalist and the more, you know, sensual South American style yeah. of ballet, right? It was fantastic. Wow. Um, my ticket cost me about $25. Okay. Wow. And Very reasonable. Had, yeah. had a great seat. Um, there is a really, uh, and the name of that, I think, uh, let me think, it's called Sodre. I'm going to put it in the chat. So that's okay. their national performing arts theater. It's called Sodre. Okay. And they have plays and ballets and concerts and you name it right and depending on how good of a seat you want is what you're going to pay for it um but yes. you know it's not hundreds of dollars to go see these things right um there's another uh, amazing place to go see performances it's called teatro solis and it is over a hundred years old. It's one of the most spectacular interiors of a theater I've ever seen. It is spectacular. So I've seen a few concerts there and I was treated. So I don't know how much they were, but again, prices for tickets are pretty reasonable all, all across the board. Teatro Solis also, same thing like Sodre. They have an amazing uh, variety of different shows that they put on there, Dan modern dance, uh, opera, performance, all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, also for entertainment, I I love to go to flea markets and things like that. Like that's my that's that's my gig, right? Like I love go looking. All my stuff in my apartment is pretty much, you know, where whatever. you find the best stuff. Exactly, right? Where you find the best stuff. <laughs> you so see those true. chairs on my wall over there behind me? Yeah. Those are two wooden folding chairs and I saw them and they were beat to death, right? Like they were just beat. And this guy, you know, I think I got them for like $20. Yeah. Took them home, got my sandpaper out, <laughs> buffed them out. They're beautiful. And now they look like artwork, right? But they they do. Apartment is, my yeah. apartment is so small, but when I have friends over now, we just take the seats off the wall and we sit down, right? Fantastic. Um, so there's a really cool flea market here in Montevideo every Sunday at, and, and it's the name of the street, but they call it the Tristan Narvaja. Feria, and I'll write that in the chat for you too, right? Okay. Just so you'll know. It is a must, it's a must go to thing. And some people, it's not Tristan Nirvana, it's Tristan Nar. Oh, now I can't remember what I just said. Uh, I'll think of it in a second. Yeah, you can message me. I will. But it is blocks and blocks and blocks and blocks of stuff, right? Yeah. And some of it is cheap, you know stuff from China and whatnot that, you know, but if you can't find it at Tristan Narvaja, you don't need it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh. 
yeah. it's it's you can buy your your weekly food there. There's a, a fresh farmers market there. You can buy house plants. You can buy antiques. You can buy leather goods. You can buy <laughs> furniture. You know, it's it's everything, and it happens every Sunday in this neighborhood. Uh, so for other forms of entertainment, there's tango classes, um, art classes. Yeah, tango is. You know, tango didn't originate in Argentina. It originated here in Uruguay. Really? Um, yes, oh, that's, a, that's a little known fact, okay? Uh-oh. So, <laughs> oh, no. This is this is the home of, of tango. Wow. Um, so okay. every Sunday, same thing. There's a museum that's called Subti. And I'll list all this stuff for you. I'll send okay. it to you later. Um, again, a free it's a free museum, but it's subterranean, hence the name Subti. Uh, they have an impromptu tango class that happens every Sunday. And this gathering of people comes, there's a guy that sets up his boom box, literally with tango music. And I was standing on the sidelines one day, just watching and this guy came and dragged me in and was tangoing with me, right? And it was, you know, it was like, okay, we're doing this now. Right. right? But it's that sort of, um, it's that sort of community, right? Like, yeah. and, and some of the people were really good. Like you could tell like, whoa, this, they got it going on. Right. Yeah. And um, so it's really fun. If, if that's like, if you're not shy and you're willing to go, you know, put yourself out there, then you can go learn how to dance tango, but yeah. there's classes too. So getting back to, what we were talking about artists. Uh, if you go on Instagram and you just Google like, you know, ceramic class or painting class or something like that, you'll be inundated. There's so many little studios that you can go and learn how to do things. Mm -hmm. I just finished a class with this guy and his wife um, and they teach old fashioned like letterpress and printing techniques. And I was really especially interested in learning how to do linotype. Yeah. And so I just finished a class. Can I show you what I did? Sure. I'll show you what I learned. Yeah. Okay. So this is these are a few of the prints that I just got done making. Wow, that's pretty. so that's a linotype. I did a whole series of bicycle ones. Uh-huh. And so I carved these in linoleum and I, I learned how to do that. And um the other thing, here's the here's the other one I did. Wow. Very and so nice. I just you know, this is way out of my, I'm a photographer. I was a, a writer and a photographer. I had a farm too, but I mean that you don't make much money off of that. Yeah. Um, I never trusted myself to be able to draw, right? Like I, I, I can't make it look like my head wants it to look right. So that's why I picked yeah. up the camera because I could, you know, I could see what I wanted. Um, I, this was kind of reaching outside my comfort zone. So I started taking this class and now I've made amazing, terrific friends, right? So that's another way to sort of get yourself into the community here in Montevideo yeah. and become part of that. Um, I have a little network of friends. Ironically, I only have one friend from the United States here and he's in my class. Wow. Almost okay. all my other, not almost, all my other friends are either Uruguayan or Argentinian. Wow. Well, is there, that, is there anything else that you feel could be helpful to the viewers? Any other information maybe we didn't cover that you can think of? I forgot to mention this when you first, if once you're starting to apply for citizenship, you have to get a physical. So they put you through tip to tail that they do a physical, right? When okay. I first got here, I was in tip top shape, right? And then I got laid low. But um, if you do have a pre-existing condition, then you'll expect to pay more for your medical I see. right and that you also have to have medical insurance when you enter the country so factor that into your budget that mm -hmm. you're going to have international some sort of international insurance now i had it but to be frank with you i didn't know how i would use it if i needed to use it right other than getting in touch you know like i i just i just had it it was a requirement sure. and i thought i was superwoman so i was like oh i'll have it right but i won't need it and then you know, thank goodness I had my, I had gotten in associated with a mutualista before I got sick. Right. So you don't so, need the, you don't need the private insurance that you had from the U S that you had the I show. Do. You don't need that anymore. No, I don't need it. Cause I'm, I'm associated with my own mutualista now. Oh, okay. 
and the mutual lease that is to let the viewers know is the the healthcare. Um, yes. And yeah, okay, so great. All right, awesome. That's great. That's great information. Well, Ramona Di Viola. <laughs> Ray. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. It's been it. my pleasure. Really nice to meet you. And if you make your way down here, let's have a cup of coffee. Come over and hang out with me, okay? <laughs> I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. Well, you have a great um, rest of the day. And, uh, thank and, you. And, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, likewise. Have a good day. Bye. Bye now.